From the prayer booklet, our reading today is Confessions of Victory. Let's begin. In the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror, even in darkness. Right now, I prepare my way with the anointed word of God. I have been honored with the right to execute judgment written in Jesus' name. When I speak God's word, even in the midst of darkness, I shall have light victory all the time that's mine in Jesus name in the name of Jesus this is the victory that overcomes the world even my faith I overcome the world with victory Jesus has obtained I maintain the victory Jesus has obtained in the name of Jesus I declare right now that my God always causes me to have victory the decisive settled victory in everything through the anointing and i always have victory over my enemies because god shows favor to me in the name of jesus i will change my focus from the world to the word and expect a miracle i expect a miracle every day god always causes me to have victory every day miracles are available every day therefore i expect a miracle every day in the name of Jesus I am an overcomer I have been born of God and this is the victory that overcomes the world even my faith in the name of Jesus my part of the fellowship of his love is the key to victory that Jesus obtained in the name of Jesus offenses will never hurt me I declare I am not self-assured I am God assured in the name of Jesus, my victory comes by refusing to judge by what my eyes see and what my ears hear. My victory comes by trusting what God has promised me. In the name of Jesus, I declare I have victory all the time. In the name of Jesus, I am a son of God. I declare now the battle will soon become a meal. It will become an experience that will nourish and build me up spiritually. In the name of Jesus, I declare breakthrough, come forth. I command you, let the redeemed of the Lord come forth. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I will maintain the victory. Thank you, Father. I am triumphant over the enemy. I am an overcomer. I am a victor in the anointed Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I don't have because I don't expect. But now, I expect, not every now and then, but every day. Every day, I expect a miracle. Every day, I expect a favor from God. Every day, I expect triumph, victory, and success. It's been made available, and I have and expect it in, and it shall not be cut off. In the name of Jesus, miracles are available. Increase is available. Healing is available and joy is available. In the name of Jesus, I expect what has been made available to me by the anointed Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I declare I have victory all the time. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God. Amen. 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 Good to see everybody on this beautiful, on this beautiful Monday morning. Monday morning. Praise God. God, God is, God is a good God. He'll turn everything around. A oh, praise report. Praise report. Praise report. I got a, I got an email about four days ago from YouTube. Now get, get this. Now get this. I get an email last Thursday. Um, apparently, we found out your channel has been hacked. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
I get an email eight months later. Uh, I fe we discovered that your channel has been hacked. Uh, let's try to figure out what to do. So I've been going back and forth, back and forth to YouTube, trying to figure out how to get there, how to get this, how to get that. And lo and behold, last night, I got the email. We have recovered and restored your, e your, your channel. We have restored all 34,000 subscribers. The 34,000 subscribers are still there. We still have we still have one million views. We lost we, we lost 10 million views, but we still have one million views. And we still have 1,500 videos of the 2,800. So we got 1,500 videos restored, one million views, and all 34,000 subscribers are still there. God is good God. God going to turn around. God is a good God. He'll turn everything everything around eight months later I, I i was calling them i was i was emailing them every two weeks i was a squeaky wheel it proves the squeaky wheel gets the grease i emailed them every two weeks i said look okay i can't look you got the channel i lost the channel but where i said where are i said where are my videos where are my 2,800 videos? I don't care about the channel. Where are my videos? 2,800 videos are gone too. So I kept I kept emailing them. I said, look, yes, the channel's gone. Where are my videos? Every two weeks, where are my videos? Where are my videos? Where are my videos? I, I must have burned that into a brain. Somebody somebody answer this man. <laughs> somebody answer this man because he could, he's not going to stop saying, where are my videos? <laughs> I said, I don't care about the channel. I got another channel. Where are my videos? Where are my videos? Where are my videos? And lo and behold, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, uh, we heard, we heard you got hacked. <laughs> you heard, I, you better heard. I've been, I've been bugging you for eight months. You better hear something. And I wasn't going to stop. I wasn't going to stop. I wasn't going to stop. I was going to bug them. I was going to bug them until they got tired of me. Somebody answer this man. Somebody answer this crazy man and tell him where his videos are. <laughs> Here they are. Here they are. We found them. They're right here. Praise God. So that means, so so that means, that means all the videos you guys wanted to see that were lost are now back. They're on the other channel. The other channel is youtube.com slash Houston. Remember, that's the old that's the old address. Now I still have to wait. It takes about two days. It takes two days. For the other name to disappear i went in and put my name back on the channel but it takes about two days for the other name michael strategy it has to drop off so you'll see my videos right, right now you'll see my videos but the other name is still the channel until until the the computer does whatever it is to change all the names the, the channel name back to my name but praise god all the videos almost all the videos are still there so 1500 videos or 1300 like that Something like that. We got most of them back. So praise God for that. That's I just get that was that happened last night, and the reason we, that that happened early, early in the morning, and that's why we got a late start. Cause I, I went to bed like five o'clock dealing with all this, and I said I gotta get up. I gotta get up in an hour and a half. So praise God. God is good. God, God is. God is. Can I get witness? God is a good God, and those who wait on the Lord gain strength. Those who wait on the Lord, don't panic, don't panic. Those who wait on the Lord, gain strength. So I just said, you know, I said, God, we gonna we gonna keep praising. And what do we do, family? What do we do? We kept praising. We came back with a new channel, and we kept praising. The devil tried to take out the channel, but we kept praising. We continue to praise God anyhow. We continued to praise God anyhow. So by praising God anyhow, things were moving in the spirit. By praising God anyhow, things were moving in the spirit. We had no idea. I had no idea I'd ever get the channel back. I had I had oh I've almost forgotten the channel. I was just trying to get my videos back. But now we got the videos and the channel back. Woo! Help me somebody. Praise God. Praise God. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. So praise God. I just I just had to share that testimony. That happened last night. That happened last night. 
and I was like in shock. I woke I woke up Jonna, 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 the channel's back. <laughs> Jonna, Jonna, Jonna sleep. Jonna, Jonna, with the channel's back. She said, what, 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 what? <laughs> Praise God, family. So I, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for your prayers the whole time. I want to thank you guys for your prayers during that whole thing of hacking. You know, we, we lost some people. A lot of people came back. Amen, amen, Jonna. The breaking news that channel is back. Now we're gonna stay here. We're gonna stay on this channel right now, but the other channel still has all the videos you guys like to watch. Now I've I've tossed some over, but there's a lot of there's a lot of videos we never got to reteach. So if you go to both channels, you'll get everything between the two channels. Some things I retaught, but last last time I didn't have time to teach yet. So now we have the the videos on both channels. Amen. So we got all those favorite videos, you guys. The playlist. I, I got to put. The, I got to put the playlist. I have to put the playlist back together. But all the videos you guys liked in the playlist that had similar topics, I have to. I have to put that together again. But still, we have the videos. Amen, family. Say, man, praise God. So I had. I just had to share it with you. <laughs> Amen, Don. Amen. Praise God, family. Praise God. Okay. Today's lesson. Today's lesson is. How to study the Bible. Now, I did this lesson. See, I put this lesson together not knowing the channel's going to be back. So I did this lesson a few years ago. And this lesson is in the earlier days of Golden Nuggets. And the Holy Spirit says, teach again how to study the Bible. How to study the Bible. And don't just read it. Don't just read it. But when we're doing it, we're understanding it. Amen. We're understanding it exactly what to do. How, hey, woman of God, we're doing it. How to do it? Amen. Now, our text, our text today, our first text today is, of course, Second Timothy, Second Timothy two fifteen. Second Timothy two fifteen is our first text regarding this topic. Regarding this topic, Second Timothy two fifteen, and it reads: Be diligent. Be diligent to pre to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And look at 16. Continue to 16, John. But shun, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Pay attention to verse 16. Because if you don't, if you don't study but shun the profane and idle babbling, for they will increase to more ungodliness. There's a lot of false doctrines going around. There's a lot. There are a lot of false doctrines going right now. And as I, it, it's, as soon as I joined TikTok, I've been aware of how many false doctrines or manipulation of the word is going on, and many people are listening and getting their ears tickled and just going and saying amen to anything. And some of what or some of what's being said is not even biblically based. So that's why it says study to show yourself approved. When you hear something, if it doesn't sound right, go to Word of God, study Word of God for yourself. The word said the word says it. Test it. Test what you hear. Don't just believe what you hear. Test it. And the word says it. Test it to make sure it's true. We we worship God in spirit and in what? In truth. So every day we are a work in progress. We are forever seeking to find the truth in the word and apply our lives to the truth. Ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So it's our job. It is our job to study every day, to bring understanding in all you're getting, get understanding and get understanding to be able to be doers of the word. If you don't understand the word, how can you be a doer of the word if you don't understand the word? So this lesson, I have, I have like nine questions. I have nine questions to ask yourself when you, when you read your Bible, after you read it, I want you to ask these nine questions. Even if, even if it's just one scripture, these nine questions will make sure you have an understanding of what you just read. Don't just read the Bible and have no understanding. Take the time to figure out 
what does every verse mean to you? And then you can understand what that verse means to you and then you can apply it to your life. But you got to get the time and take the time to get the understanding of every verse to be able to apply it to your life. Amen. That's first text. That's first text. Second text, of course, we've heard the second text. Psalm 1 verse 2. Psalm 1 verse 2. Psalm chapter 1 verse 2. But his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. His delight is in what? The New Testament. His, his delight is in the word of God. His delight is in the word of God. And in his law, in, in his law, in his law, the Bible now, New Testament, in his law, he meditates day and night. So that means as we live the word, as we live the word, we're always studying the word. And when you read the word every day and apply what you learn every day, then you can easily apply the word to your life. Because you're taking time every day to understand the word. And once you understand it, you can apply it. That's why it must, that's why I'm taking the time to reteach this lesson and review this lesson of different questions. There, there, now there are plenty, there are plenty of Bible study guides you can buy. This is what I'm giving you right now is not the only way. There are plenty of Bible study guides you can buy online or buy at a Christian bookstore. This is one I found years ago. And I like the questions this asks because when you take the time to analyze these questions, it helps you understand the, the scripture from all angles. Amen. Okay, so let's go through let's go through some of the, the questions. Now, what I'm going to use. My, my my example, I'm going to use John 14, 12 to 14. I'm going to use as an example for this lesson, I'm going to use John 14, 12 to 14 in order to apply these, these questions. Amen. And what does John 14, 12 to 14 says? Truly I say to you, truly I say to you, these things I do, you can do also because I go to the Father that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Truly I say to you, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He says it twice. He repeats it. Truly I say to you, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Nobody, re nobody repeats himself unless it's very important for you to get it. So if he, if Jesus repeated twice, it means we need to get that. Get what? Truly in my name, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I, I, one person, one person posted, one person posted, why we, why do we need the name? Why do we need the name Jesus? What is the purpose of Jesus? What what is the purpose? He just said it. Some somebody actually posted. I don't understand why we have to say the name of Jesus. Uh, excuse me if Jesus said if you ask anything in my name I would do it there is no question there is a question that's the instruction in the word of God but there is someone going down right now preaching and teaching that you don't need to say that you just 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 say the prayer and end it and these are variations I'm telling you about there are many variations going around right now of the word of God that are being manipulated and if you're not paying attention, you will be pulled in because they have PhDs in manipulation of the word. Let me say again, if there are a lot of people posting right now a manipulation of the word, a manipulation of the truth in order to vary it. And if, if you don't know what the word says, you go right with it and not even know you're in the wrong place because it sounds good. It sounds good. They start with the word. They start with the word of God and then drift and next thing you know where is that in the bible i don't see this where is that it's not there and that's where we learn to study for ourselves when the bible says test test the word test it if you have anything here amen okay first question the first question now we just read the scripture we just read the scripture john 14 12 14 
Now, the first question you ask, first question you ask, what words, I'll say it slow, Jonna, what words, phrases, or ideas are repeated in the passage? What words, phrases, or ideas are repeated in this passage? And then, and then the second part is, what is the significance of the repetition? The second part, what is the significance of the repetition? So what words, phrases, or ideas are repeated in the passage? That's first part, part number one. One B, if they and if it's repeated, what is the significance of the repetition? Now, we know, we know from the verse we just looked at, the verse is what? Truly I say to you, if you truly I say to you, these things I do, you can also that I go to the Father and the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, first off, key phrases. Truly I say to you, these things I do, you can also key phrase that's telling us that is telling us about the power of God. Remember, Jesus was operating with the Spirit of God in him as well. Being the Son of God, he was the 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 the, 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 the Holy Spirit was in Jesus as he operated 100 percent in the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus, the man, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's what made Jesus Christ. Christ is the God part that was in Jesus. Jesus in the flesh, the man was born and then filled with with God's spirit, Christ is which is why we say Jesus Christ. And he was operating 100% through the Holy Spirit. 100% in the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes sure, and that's why we use the Holy Spirit. And that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit to be able to walk in victory. Hey, did he? Now, that's the first thing. So then what is repeated? What is repeated? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Truly, I say to you, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That right there, right there, that is showing the importance of using in the name of Jesus. He just said twice. He said two times. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And there are other parts of the Bible. There are other parts of the Bible where it's also repeated. That means we need to get it. So when you pray, when you pray in the name of Jesus, you want to make sure you're praying correctly. The words you say, the words you say are empowered. As soon as you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, your prayer is empowered. And when you end the prayer, in Jesus' name I pray. Now your prayer has empowered because just we're, we're in obedience. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So that's praying the proper way. So number one, the significance is telling us how to pray. Amen. Number two. Number two. What are the commandments in this passage? What are the commandments in this passage? What are the commandments in this passage? Not the second part. Which one represents a timeless command for all believers? Which one represents a timeless command for all believers? So we were talking about what is com what commandment do you hear in the scripture? What, it says what? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a commandment. He's telling us. He's telling us. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So that command is when you pray, believe you have received it. Uh, the other verse, when you pray a command, believe you have received it. When you pray, believe you have received it. The other verse, Mark eleven twenty four. See, I'm giving you examples of there's always a kind of command in the scriptures that's telling us what we do, what we should be doing in order to be doers of the word. He gives us a command in the scriptures to do and do what the word says. And that's an example. The the Mark 11, Mark 11, 24 is also an example. If When you pray, when you pray, don't just pray. When you pray, believe you have received it and you have it. 
So Mark 11, 24 is also an example for number two. There's a command in the scripture. What do you do? When you pray, believe you have received it, and you shall have it. If you ask anything in my name, if you ask anything in my name, that's an action. That's an action. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Both of those are telling us what to do. And that's commandment. Now, which command, the third part, Jonah, in number two, the, 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 maybe call this 2B, Jonah, 2, 2B. The other question in number two, which command speaks to you personally? Which command we just talked about, which one speaks to you personally? For example, until this, until this lesson, have you remembered to say, Father, in the name of Jesus? Uh, some people pray. Some people say, they say the prayer and they say, Amen. They'll say their prayer and say, Amen. And they won't even mention Jesus. So, for example, if you read this, it says, which one speaks to you? And you just read, if you ask anything in my name, I would do it. And you haven't been asking anything in Jesus' name. You've just been saying prayers and never saying Father, in the name of Jesus, or in Jesus' name we pray. Some people pray and never say Jesus. They say, they say the prayer, amen. Say the prayer, amen. Wait a minute. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. He said, if you ask anything in my name, in Jesus' name I pray, I am doing it through his name. Why? Why what why, 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 why we do that? Why do we need to do it? Why do we need to do it? The word says do it. Obedience is doing it. The reason we do it is in obedience because the word said to do it. There are many people right now, there are many people who are questioning the word. They say, why do we have to do it that way? Why do we do it this way? How come? How come? The word says it. The word says it. Amen. Number three. Now, we just talked about what speaks to you personally. We just talked about that. Number three, what can I learn? What can I learn from either the negative or positive examples of personalities mentioned in the passage? What can I learn? What can I learn? This is the question, number three. What can I learn from either the negative or positive example of personalities mentioned in this passage? Now, what can you learn negatively or positively? And like I said before, like I just said before, if you never have been praying like this, you just learn a positive way. If you've never prayed like this, the positive way of learning is you now learn how to pray. You've learned now what to include in your prayer. When you can learn what you didn't do right, and the word tells you, you ask the question, what is this scripture telling me to do? And what am I not doing? You're learning the negative of what you're not doing, and you're also learning the positive of what you should be doing. The word is telling you what you shouldn't be doing and what you should be doing at the very same time. It's telling you, it's telling you right there. It's telling you right there. So when you take the time and, and let it soak in, you take the time and let the Holy Spirit minister to you this, the Holy Spirit will give you greater understanding because you're seeking the truth. And when you seek the truth, the Holy Spirit will give you more understanding because ye shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. That's why you seek the truth. You seek it and you'll find it. Ask and it should be given. Seek, seek, and you shall find. Knock. It'll be open to you. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Knock. Ask. It shall be given. Ask. 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 We, the questions. Ask. It shall be given. Seek. Seek. And you shall find. Knock. And it will be open. You ask the Lord for you ask the Lord for understanding. After you read it, after you read it, if you have trouble understanding, pray for understanding if after you read this and you still have no understanding pray for understanding lord lord i need understanding lord, lord bless me lord lord bless me with revelation to understand this scripture for my life you're trying to understand the scripture 
for your life in order to apply it to your life. So we study it. If you have trouble understanding it, pray for understanding, pray for understanding in order to be able to apply it to your life. Amen. Amen. Number four, number four. What promises, what promises to claim can I find here? What promises to claim can I find in this verse? Now, what's the promise? This is easy. Number four is easy because Jesus said it twice. He says, because I go to the Father that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Truly, I say to you, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He just gave you the claim. He just gave you the truth. He just said two times, two times, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. You only repeat something two times to make sure people get it. There are several times Jesus repeated himself. And the only time someone says something two times is because they want to make sure you don't miss it. These things. Now, the other promise, the other promise, these things I do, you can do also. That's the other claim. The promise the, the other promise, these things I do, you can do also. And what things are those? What things are those? These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, cast out demons, speak with your tongues, take up serpents. If you drink anything deadly, it shall no means hurt you. They, get, they will lay hands on sick and they will recover. He said those things. These signs shall follow those who believe. So that's part of the same scripture. These things I do. The other verse is saying. Those who follow him. Those who follow me. Can do these things. Those two scriptures are together. I, I, you know I brought. I left my, my I left my concordance. The other scripture. Uh, Deanne, Deanne could you uh, 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 look that other scripture up. Uh, these signs shall follow. I believe, I, I believe that's Matthew as well. I, I left my note. I left my, my scripture notes. Fell off. My my Bible. So that's the other scripture. These signs shall follow those who believe in my name. In my name, cast out demons, speak with new tongues, take up serpents. If you drink anything deadly, nobody's hurt you. They shall lay hands on sick and they will recover. And the other thing Jesus did is what? He raised people from the dead. Because he just said, These things I do, you can do also. Now, don't feel like a failure. If you can't do it let me say it again don't feel like a failure if you can't do all these things there is a measure of faith you have to increase your faith to the level to do all the things he listed right now you may have a little faith but as you keep studying as you keep studying your faith is stronger faith come up Romans 10 17 what Romans 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. The more you hear the word, the more you read the word, the more you study the word. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So you get more understanding and more faith if you keep reading. The more you read, the more you read, the stronger you get. Amen, John. Thank you. Mark 16, 17. Amen. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deanne and John. Uh, that scripture. So Mark's Mark 16, 17, 18. Mark 16, verse 17, 18. That's the one where it says, these signs shall follow. Amen. So those, that's number four. That's promises. These are promises. These things I do, you can also. That is a promise. That is a promise. If these things I do, you can also, which means you must increase your faith if you can't do it right now, if you can't do it right now, increase your faith by what? Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the more you study the word, the more you read the word, and the more you apply the word, the stronger your faith gets. Faith, faith can be increased the more time you spend with God, the more miracles in your life, more faith. 
The more you see God work in your life, more faith. The more he blesses you, more faith. Every time God moves in your life, it increases your faith. And then you, and that's why you take time to have a spiritual journal and write down all the times God has moved your life. And when you write down all the times God has moved your life, it brings your faith to another level. Because you look at it, you, you wrote it down. You wrote it down. God, God moved here, a miracle there. God moved here, God moved there. And your journal is listing all the times God has moved in your life. If you've never, if you've never done this, I encourage you. If you've never done this, take the time, sit down one day, sit down one day, and just write, write down, write down all the times God has moved your life. Write down, make it plain. I guarantee, if you take the time on your own time, take the time, sit down one day, and just write down all the times you can remember when God moved in your life. A miracle, a blessing, a provision, a breakthrough. Write it down and watch how much you see. Man, God's been with me the whole time. He never left me. When you write it down, you realize he's never left you. Because you see it, you write it down, make it plain, and you see the miracles and the blessings and provision and breakthrough because you took the time to write down all the times God has moved in your life. And that's the understanding. That's, the, that's number four. That shows you what promises, what promises in the word of God because you have it written down. It's your testimony. If, if he saved you, your testimony is part of this. Number four, the promise you claim. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Number five, number five. What sin, what sin or shortcoming does a passage expose in your life? What sin or shortcoming does a passage expose in your life? Sometimes you read a scripture and you get convicted. Because you're not doing it. So right here, a perfect example. If 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 you've never believed you can heal, or you never believe you have enough faith, we we use our example again. We use our example. If it says if you ask anything in my name, I would do it, and you never you never use his name. That's a shortcoming. Because the word says, whatever you ask in my name, I would do it. But when you pray, you never pray. You never use Jesus. When you never use his name. That's a shortcoming. That is something you're not doing. If the word says to do, it means you're not doing it. You just pray and never say Jesus. Never say Father. That's like the other one. It's like the other one. If we just said, what's saying a shortcoming? Now, in some cases, in some cases, the scripture you read, for example, for example, in, in other verses, let me give another example. For this number, for number, number five, another scripture to bring number five into, into fruition. It says, we use Romans 12, 2 for number six, number five. Romans 12, 2 for number five. Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to the things in this world, but be transformed by the renewing your mind. So if, now Romans 12, 2 for number five, what sin, what sin does it bring out? If you are conformed to the world, if you give into the world, you are walking in disobedience of the word. It says, be not conformed to the things in this world. That's the scripture. Now, what does it, No. 4 says, what sin or shortcoming does this expose my life? And if you're always upset by the world, you're always upset by the news, you're always upset what's going on in the world, you are giving into the world. The word says, be not conformed. And you, if you're upset all the time because of what's happening in the world, in the world you, you are conformed. You are conformed to the world because the world is getting you upset. And if you get upset, it means you're conformed to the things in this world. You're giving in to the violence and the fear and the and anxiety and the hatred and whatever's going on in the world. You give in to it. Hey, Carissa, if you give in to it, you are conformed to the world. To the world but the word says but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and stop it stop 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 focusing on the word and start focusing on the word the world out 
Word in. We say it all the time. The new t-shirt on the way. New t-shirt on the way. Word in. World out. You got to get the world out. You got to get the world out. You got to get the world out. The world is fear. The world is hatred. The world is violence. That's the world. And if you get into the world, it will bring you down because you give into it. The fear, the worry, the stress, anxiety. Amen. Now, see, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, see, now the, the people like doctors, doctors, and 911 and, and, and police, the, the, the police who have to deal with the criminal, the negative element, that's why they need therapy to be able to let that go. See, if your job, if your job, if your job is dealing with the negative part of the world as a job, you have to be refilled. You have to be refilled to be able to survive the next day. If you don't refill the, with the word of God every day because you work with the public, the world will come home with you. When you leave the job, go to your car, stop before you go home and pray Psalm 5110. Say Psalm 5110 in your car. If you work in the public every day, when you get to your car, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew in me, Lord, a steadfast spirit. Get the stuff out of me, Lord. I say every day, Lord, remove Remove, Lord, anything in me that's not like you. You got to say that prayer in the car before you go home or you take it home with you. You take it home with you if you don't say it. If you don't say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and, and, and renew in me a steadfast spirit. Lord, clean me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Get the junk I went with through today. Get the spirits off me, Lord. The junk on me at work. In Jesus' name. When, when I used to teach school, when I used to teach school, my son, my son kind of laughed at me because when I came home from school, because I always had bad classes because I'm a big guy and being a big guy, the, the schools, I was a substitute teacher. I was a substitute teacher for 20 years. And because I'm a big guy, the schools will always give me the worst classes all day long. Six hours of dealing with bad kids. I came home, I was mad for about an hour. I told my son, uh, son, it's not, it's not you, son, but please let dad just kind of sit here for a minute, about an hour, and then we'll talk. Because one time he came, I came home, he said something, something to me, I snapped at him. Because the, the, the school, the class was still on me. The spirits from the classroom came home with me. I had to go, I had to go and sit quietly somewhere 45 minutes to an hour to get the spirits from the bad class off me so I wouldn't put it on my son. I'm not snapping at him because of him. I'm snapping because of the spirits I dealt with for six hours at school. And I came home angry, snappy, because all day long, sit down, stop talking, sit down, stop talking, sit, stop, 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 ah! <laughs> uh, woo! Uh, the three things I said for six hours. Sit down. Stop talking. Shut up. Sit down. Stop talking. Shut up. Sit, stop talking. Shut up. Stop, take your hand. Stop. 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 For six hours. That's what I'm doing. Because they gave me a bad class. I always, all I was was a teacher drill sergeant. The, the principal told me, if you teach nothing else, teach them discipline. So I couldn't, I couldn't be like another teacher. Let's teach math. Math and science. And history. No, I had to teach discipline. So I was a drill sergeant for six hours. Stop it. Sit it. Put your hand. Sit down. Take your hands over. Stop. 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 Go. Stop. What? What? Ah, ah. <laughs> Help me, somebody. I had to go out the bathroom. Help me, somebody. Because <laughs> all I knew was three words sit down, stop talking, shut up. Sit down, stop talking, shut up. Sit down, stop talking, shut up. That was my mantra for the six hours every class. Sit down, stop talking, and shut up. <laughs> I go my, my I go home. My son says, Hi Dad, stop, sit down, stop talking, shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that, Dad. I'm sorry, son. Give dad some time. Get give dad some time to get sit down, stop talking, and shut up out of his spirit. <laughs> I'm driving home. Sit down, stop talking, shut up. Sit down, stop talking, shut up. <laughs> 
See, I didn't understand. I didn't understand then. I didn't understand I was bringing spirits home. See, that was before. That was before I got the ministry. That was before I understood you bring spirits home. You got to get that stuff off of you at work. Get it. Don't go home with it. When you get to your car, when you get to your car, pray for cleansing. Get that stuff off you and don't take it home. You will take it home. I guarantee you, you will take it home. If you don't stop in the car and say, Lord, cleanse me, Lord. Lord, get these spirits off me, Lord. Created me, created me a clean heart, Lord. And re renewing me a steadfast spirit, Lord. Please, Lord, remove anything in me that's not like you in Jesus' name. I didn't say that. When I finally understood I was bringing spirits home from school, I understood the reason I was snapping at home was because I brought the spirits home. I was, snap, I was snapping at my son because the spirits in me from the classroom came home with me. I'm serious. For those of you uh, snurks in Deanna, those of you who work in the public, you understand what I'm saying. You can bring those spirits home and your mood is affected by the spirits on you when you come home. So, so that's that one. <laughs> Amen. Number six. Number six. What, number six. What reasons, what reasons for pleasing God, what reasons are for pleasing God are suggested by the content? What reasons for pleasing God are suggested by the content. Now, this one's easy. What is the reason to please God? He said, these things I do, you can do also, because I go to the Father, that the Father may be glorified. I go to the Father, that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, the reason to please God is, he just said, these things I do, you can also because because what I go to the Father that the Father may be glorified, glorified because when you say in the name of Jesus, you'll glorify the Father. Because the Father, Jesus, remember Jesus said, remember Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. Amen, Glenda. Remember Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So when He says. I go to the Father, it's because the Spirit in Jesus is God. The Spirit in us is God. So when you when you when you're doing and remembering who you are in Christ, it all comes down to remembering who we are in Christ. The power in the name of Jesus, the power in the blood of Jesus, and the authority in us, the authority in us to walk in victory. So in that, so in number six, the reason for pleasing God is because I go to the Father, the Father may be glorified. And that's what Jesus says. Because when you ask anything in my name, the Father is glorified. If you pray without Jesus, you say, man, man, that's a great prayer. But then when I say in, the, in Jesus' name I pray, it is now activated. It is now activated. Hey, Cynthia. Hey, man, Cynthia. Seven. Seven. What truth, again, what truth or principle encourages me and why? What truth or principle encourages me and why? Now, what amazes me about that verse is when Jesus said, these things I do, you can do also. That blew me away. For many years, just reading that blew me away. Because the word says, these miracles, the, the word says, the miracles in the, in the word are not even all the things Jesus did. It says there are too many to even put in a book all the miracles Jesus did. And he just said, these things I do, you could also wrap your mind around that. Just wrap your mind around that. Can you imagine having enough faith to be able to do even half the things he did? 
Lay hands on sick. Again, 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 what is it? These signs shall follow those who believe. Again, that's the answer. See, if you understand what should encourage you, the more you study the word, the more time you spend with God, the more power you get. And it says, these signs shall follow those who believe. Cast out demons, speak with their tongues, take up serpents, drink anything deadly, so no one hurt you, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These signs are found. Now, these are signs. It doesn't matter if you have all five. If you have even one of these signs working right now in your life, that shows you're studying and, and getting closer to the Lord. Just the, just the fact, just the fact, if you, have you ever prayed for a loved one? If you've ever prayed for a loved one, you already don't, you already start to do it. If someone says, I need prayer and you take the time, you take the time to pray for them and they don't feel good. Now, even though you may not know it, you pray for them, they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You may not know it. You may not even know it. But sometimes, sometimes I pray for Jonna. She may be having a, 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 a back spasm sometimes. I lay my hands on her back and I just lay my hands and say, Lord, bring healing, bring healing to spasm, Lord. Bring healing to spasm in Jesus' name. I got my hand on Jonna's back and I'm just saying, Lord, Father God, bring healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, bring healing to her back right now and touch this spasm, Lord. Bring healing to the spasm. And I'll keep my hand on her back for about 10 minutes. And I can feel, I can feel the chest pain as well. Sometimes you have chest pain. I put my hand on the chest. Father Jesus' name, remove this pain right now, Lord. Touch, heal, deliver right now. Whatever is causing this pain, Lord. Whatever is causing this pain, remove it right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, remove the pain she's feeling right now in her chest. And about 10 minutes later, she says, wow, I feel so much better. Because something was attacking her. So don't underestimate, don't underestimate the power of God in you. Don't underestimate the power you have when you pray for someone, a family member, a, a, fit, a sick relative, whoever it is. Don't underestimate the power of the living God that you have in you right now. When you use your authority and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, protect my kids, my marriage, my home, whatever it is, whoever it is. When you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, those words are activated. Because he said, if you ask anything in my name, I would do it. And you said, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring healing. You just spoke it. You just spoke it. You just said, Jesus, in Jesus' name, bring healing, bring peace. Bring provision, whatever you pray for, whatever you pray for, the Father is glorified because you're connecting to the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Number eight. Number eight. How should, how should what I'm reading affect my prayer life? Whoa. How should what I'm reading Affect my prayer life. That's number that's number nine. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. How should what I'm reading affect my prayer life? Now this is a perfect verse. And this is a perfect verse. Like I said earlier, like I said earlier, if you're not praying and using the name of Jesus, by now changing and saying, Oh man, I've been forgetting. I, I keep forgetting to say in Jesus' name. What? We can't forget that. When you say a prayer and just say amen, and it could be a it could be a beautiful prayer. It could be a nice prayer. It can sound really good. The prayer can sound really good, and you say amen. But you can even feel a difference when you say the same words. You read the same prayer and say at the end, in Jesus' name I pray. And I when I do it. When I do it, I actually feel a different energy. Just like today. Like today when we did the confession. The confession, the confession we just read, I think just ended with amen. But even though what we read today, I added, I put at the end of it, 
all these things we ask in Jesus name. So when I read a prayer and it has nothing but amen, I add all these things we ask in Jesus name or in Jesus name we pray. Whatever you do, whatever version you say, when you say that, you are empowering the words you just read, the prayer you just read is now empowered when you say in Jesus name I pray. All these things I ask in Jesus name. Either way, whichever one, the prayer is now empowered by what you just said, including in Jesus' name. And even, I even feel a difference when I say it that way versus if I don't say it. Amen. So it should change the way you pray. This verse, this verse should change the way you pray if you don't use the name of Jesus. Now, understanding this verse, if you ask anything in my name, I would do it. And, and Mark 11, 24, when you pray, believe you have received it. Believe, believe you have received it. Number eight, Mark 11, 24 even goes better. When you pray, believe you have received it. What should I be doing? How, that means when you pray, when you, when you apply number eight to Mark 11, 24, we're going to apply number eight in Mark 11, 24. When you pray, what? Believe. You have received it. We talked about this. How do you believe? How do you believe it? See it. When you pray for healing, see the healing. You pray for provision, see provision. See yourself dancing with joy, provision. When you pray for deliverance, see yourself delivered and shouting the joy and praising God, thanking God for deliverance. Because when you pray, when you pray, believe you have received it and you should have it but you got to believe it don't just say a prayer and don't believe it just don't say words see what you're praying for see the victory see the healing the breakthrough the provision the, the promotion whatever it is whatever it is you're praying for when you pray believe see it believe see it believe you have received it and the reason you have it is because as a man thinks, as a man thinks, so he is. And you shall have it. Amen. Last one. Last one, number nine, last one. How does this passage increase my appreciation for Jesus Christ? How does this passage increase my appreciation for Jesus Christ? Now both these verses we just read, both of these both of these we just read, just by being obedient to the word, your appreciation for being obedient to what the word says, that that alone should give you appreciation. For Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's that verse. When you pray, believe you have received it. That's that verse. But in both verses, in both verses. How does it increase your appreciation? The gratitude comes out. That's when we say, thank you, Jesus, for the authority. Thank you, Jesus, for the authority. Because the authority is when you pray, believe you have received it. The authority comes into effect as soon as you say, in the name of Jesus, your authority goes into effect. The authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be enemies hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, Luke 10, 19 go into effect as soon as you say, in the name of Jesus, the authority comes to life. You already have it in you. You already have it in you. But it's not activated until you say, oh, are you going through depression? You're going through depression? Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke depression. Right now, you're going through worry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of worry, the spirit of fear. You're under attack. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this attack. Name it unnamed, seen unseen, whatever attack me right now. In the name of Jesus, you use your authority when you need it. It's always there. It's always there, but it's not activated until you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and you speak it. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. If you say, get thee behind me, Satan, and don't say Jesus, the devil goes, 
get thee behind me. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Devil is laughing in your face. You say, get, get thee behind me, Satan. And that's all you say. And the devil's over there laying, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> but then you say, get thee behind me, Satan. In Jesus' name, whoa. He just said, Jesus, be on. It's not, and not the words, it's the authority. The devil doesn't run from the words. He's running from the authority. Because when you say, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, above the earth, beneath the earth, on the earth, that Jesus is Lord. And that's what happens. That's what happens when you use the name of Jesus in your prayers. The devil is running from the, the authority, not you. He's not running from you. He's running from your authority. Draw near to God and God draws near to you. He's running from your connection and he's running from your authority. That he knows you got it. The, the devil knows you got the authority, but he prays the only time I say this all the time. The only time the devil prays is praying you forget to use the authority. If you forget to use the authority, the devil's got you. I say it all the time. Don't abuse the authority by not using it. The reason you have the authority, the reason you have the authority is to rebuke fear, rebuke worry and stress, anxiety, and every attack you go through. And, and nothing shall by enemies hurt me. Nothing shall by enemies hurt me because you use your authority. He's given you. So these, these nine questions, I hope I gave you an understanding that this is how we applied these nine, these nine questions to those two verses. So you see, when you take the time and ask these questions like we did in these two verses, look at the understanding you have now of how to pray and look at the understanding of what you can be when your faith is at the right level. Just by the, 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 the main text, John 14, 20, 14, when you understand when your faith level is right, these things he did, you can also, when your faith level is at the right level, which means keep studying, keep praying, keep seeking a closer walk with the Lord. The closer you get to Him, the closer you get to the Lord, the stronger your faith gets. And the stronger your faith gets, the more power you have. The power in the name of Jesus. Because you believe of the power you have and you receive it. And you believe you walk in the anointing. And the anointing comes to life in you because you believe in the anointing that's in you. It's all about what you receive to understand that is in you. If you don't believe you have it, if you don't believe you have the authority, guess what? The authority will not work. Let me say it again. If you don't believe you have the authority in you, it will never work. But you understand if you are a follower of Christ, if you are a follower of Christ, he says, behold, I give you who, who, who's he given? Those who believe in him. Behold, I give you authority. The trample of serpents and scorpions, all the power of the enemy. He's not talking to people who don't believe. He's not talking to those who don't believe. At that time, he's talking to his disciples. He's talking to his disciples, people who follow him. And those of us who come later who follow his words, his teaching now, these things I do, you can do, I give you the authority to trample. I give who? I give who the authority? Those who follow Christ. I give you the authority. The authority what? In my name. The authority to use my name. The authority to use my name. That's what the authority is, to use my name. And when you use the name of Jesus, you have the authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall my enemies hurt you, but you got to use it. Don't sit there and have the authority and don't use it. Don't let the devil knock you over. Don't let the devil take over your life. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Rebuke him, bind him, and cast him back to the pit of hell from which he came in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's where I close. That's where I close. So I, so I hope by using these two verses... I hope you have a greater understanding now so when you read the word of God for you for yourself even if you don't ask all nine questions whatever scripture you read whatever scripture you read make sure you take the time to understand how that affects you how it applies to your life 
so you can be able to use the scripture in your life. Like I said at the very beginning, you can't be a doer of the word if you don't understand the word. And all you're getting, get what? Get understanding. And once you understand what you're reading, then you can apply the word to life and then be activated by the word of God in your life. Because it's the doing of the word that brings the miracles. It's the doing of the word that see, releases the miracles and the blessings in your life. Doing the word, not just reading it, doing it. The reading gets understanding, but the doing is activating what you read. It's like, like, it's like, 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 like the saying goes, uh, what is it? No, knowledge is power? No. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge with action is power. Knowledge is understanding. Knowledge is power. But knowledge with action is power. You can have all the knowledge in the world. And if you never do anything, what good is it? It's still in your head. So realistically, if knowledge with action is power, what do you do with the knowledge in your head? Don't just hold it. Knowledge is not power without action. Knowledge is not power without action. You can have all the knowledge in the world, and if you do nothing with it, it just sits there and does nothing. But knowledge with action is real power. And I leave you with that understanding of what we said today. That is the goal of this lesson. With everything you read, the goal of this lesson everything you read in the Bible to get an understanding to be able to apply it to your life and let it activate in your life and once the word is activated in your life you'll be a doer of the word and that's when things start moving that's when things start moving in your life because now you are obedient and doing the word that's a command that's another scripture we could use the command is the command is what be doers of the word and not just hears only. We could have used that verse. Be doers of the word. Are you doing it? Are you doing the word or are you just reading it? See? See how that verse applies to the lesson? Ask yourself, am I a doer or am I a reader? Do I just read the word or am I doing it? That's applying this lesson today. That's another verse. Am I a doer of the word? I need to change some things. I need to be doing the word. I need, I need to be doing what the word says. I need to activate myself and do what the word says. Not just read it. That's another example of applying today's lesson to that verse. And do that with every verse you read. And then before you know it, all the understanding is coming through all the words you read in the word of God to be able to live by God's will because you understand what you're reading. You've got to understand what you're reading before you can do it. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson. To be able to, to apply the word because we study it. And not just study it, Lord. After we study, Lord, we do it. Lord, I pray for everyone who hear this, everyone who hear my voice right now, Lord. I pray a double head of double head protection, but I pray for a double anointing focus, Lord. A blessing of focus right now on every fellowship member right now who will hear my voice. Lord, give us supernatural focus to keep studying, to keep using the word every day, to keep living the word every day, Lord. Help us, Lord, to not stray away, Lord. Give us that, that laser focus to never drift away from you, Lord, to always keep our mind stayed on you, through every situation, every struggle, every fear, every worry, every infirmity, whatever it is, Lord, help us, Lord, to have that focus we need to walk in victory, doing your will and your way every single day of our life. In Jesus' name, praise God. Amen, fellowship, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. To get the understanding we need to be able to use what we read every day in the Word of God. We are, we are in progress every day.
There is so much to learn in the word. There's so much to apply in the word. So as we keep doing it one step at a time, the closer we get to walking in God's will and God's way. Because every time you read a new verse, do it. Every time you study a new verse, do it. And you're doing more and more each time you read the word. Because every time you read the word, if you do it, that's getting closer and closer to God's word. One step at a time. Not all at once. One step at a time. Amen. Before we close, before we close, I always know someone's watching or visiting for the first time who who doesn't understand this fellowship and why we're always on fire to come together six days a week over two hours in praise and worship and fellowship. Having never met physically, but knowing we all love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which makes us all brothers and sisters in Christ. But someone doesn't understand that. So right now, I'm going into the closing prayers. As always, please no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is to lead our respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening. And you've been here the whole time. You heard the praise and worship earlier. And you heard the sermon. But right now, you can't connect. Because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry. Fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turn away from you. Friends stab you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up a life itself right now. Yet somehow, you find yourself on this channel and have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you here because God sees what you're going through right now, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and that's why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil is telling you once you leave God or fail God, you could never go back. And that right there is alive from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and it fell back into sin, there is nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Recommit your life to Christ. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So right now, whether you're a backslider, you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression and hopelessness and fear and worry. Or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Either way, I want you to pray with me. Repeat after me right now. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins. And was raised from the dead. I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And I commit right now. I will not do a single thing in life. Or make a single decision in life. Without lifting up to you first. Create me, Lord, a clean heart. And remove from me anything and everything. That's not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is the right to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict us when you're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, Spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday. Every day, spend time with God. Feed your spirit. Start your flesh. Feed your faith. Start it out every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. The next step is to repent. And repent means to change your ways from the worldly ways to God's ways. 
And the closer you get to God and the Holy Spirit gets stronger in you, before you know it, you'll no longer do the things you used to do. And now you're doing the things God asked you to do. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirit of retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of mind, out of a spirit, out of a home, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you all came. In Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose, Lord, into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore. Restore every area of life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. And Lord, please give me his protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, Lord. Physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we'll be healed. And now, Lord, we confess it every day. We confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Every day, confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, that's your blessing. Your blessing of abundance, Lord. Rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship. Every financial need, whatever it is. For you to supply all our need according to your riches and glory, Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want anything who the Lord is my shepherd. Let's repeat this together. Let's say this together, family. Let's say this together. For I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am blessed going in and blessed going out. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall my enemies hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle to pray for right now. And now we know, Lord, now we know every day, every day, we take time to visualize it, to see your miracle, see it every day, see it, believe it, and receive it in your heart. And as you receive it into your heart, expect it, expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when, we'll never know the exact when, but because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day could be a day and the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face a divine pool upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing every you touch and speak to, a blessing to everyone you touch, a blessing to everyone you pass by. And bless when I open your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you 24 7, 365, including leap year. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. The fellowship say, Amen. Amen. Amen.